automates repetitive tasks and saves you time. When you run a macro, as if you are putting Excel on autopilot. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, we create a very useful macro from ground up using the classic technique and commands from the ribbon. Once I finish it, I close and reopen the file and recreate the same project using only shortcuts, amazing shortcuts. Fasten your seatbelt and get ready for a spectacular Excel flight. file you can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video in this worksheet I have a list of records in column A and each record has the same exact pattern a first name a last name an address a city a province a postal code a phone and two email addresses in order to be able to analyze my debt I cannot have all the records in a column I need to have each record in a separate row and to do this if I had few records, I could retype them or fix them by cutting and pasting, but if you have a huge number of records, it will be better to automate the process of fixing them by creating a macro. A macro automates repetitive tasks, and in order to create a macro, I need the tools for doing that, and these tools are available on a tab that's not displayed by default on the ribbon, it's the developer tab of the ribbon. So I start by bringing the developer tab by clicking on the file tab and then I go down to options and then I click on customize the ribbon and then I check the box for developer when I hit OK the developer tab would have been added to the ribbon I'm going to create my macro by using the commands on the ribbon but when I finish creating my macro and testing it I'm going to close and reopen the file and recreate the same project uniquely by using shortcuts so now, let's click on the Developer tab, and to the left side of the Developer tab, I need to do two things. Number one, I need to tell Excel whether I'm recording a relative or an absolute macro. I start by selecting cell A2, which is the empty cell on top of the first record, and this is where I start my recording. And because I'll be fixing the first record as a model, I want the macro, when it runs, it fixes the next record and the next record. That's why, this macro will be repeating the same steps relative to a starting point. And I want to tell Excel that I'm recording a relative macro by highlighting the command use relative reference. When I click on it, it becomes highlighted. And now because I have cell A2, the cell on top of the first record selected, I'm ready to start my recording. To start the recording, I can do one of two things. I can either click on record macro on the developer tab or I can click on the little square to the left side of the status bar. That's the same exact thing. I click on Record Macro, and the Record Macro dialog box opens. I need to assign a name to this macro, and I'll be naming it Fix My Records. I'm not allowed to have spaces in the macro name, and that's why I omit the space, and I capitalize the first letter of each word to make it easier for me to read the macro name. I want to assign a shortcut that I'll be using for running this macro over and over again so I click in the box and because the control command is already there I'm going to hit shift and the character I'll be using as an example shift P so to run this macro I'll be using the shortcut control shift P we have three locations for storing the macro but I'll keep the default selected this workbook so the scope of this macro will be limited to this workbook in which I created the moment I hit OK Record macro will change to stop recording. And now I'm in the process of recording. A macro recorder is like an audio recorder, but instead of recording sound, it's recording your keyboard punches and your mouse clicks. Everything I do on the keyboard is being recorded. Everything I do with my mouse is being recorded. My steps are recorded, my mistakes are recorded, and my corrections are recorded as well. In order to create this macro, I'm going to select the first record and switch it from a single column to a single row. 
and I do that by selecting the first name of the first tracker and then I drag down to select the entire first tracker. I can fix this tracker by using different techniques. I'll be using the simplest technique of copying and pasting. So I go to the Home tab, I copy that tracker, and then I go back to the cell where I started the recording, cell A2, the empty cell on top of the first tracker, and I want to paste it in one single row. That's called Transpose. I click on the down arrow of the Paste command, and from here, I select the rightmost option in the second row. That's the transpose command. And now I fix the first tracker. So I need to get rid of the original tracker, and I do that by selecting the rows from 3 to 11, and then I delete them by right-clicking and selecting Delete. To prepare for stopping the recording, I need to select the ending cell, and this ending cell will be on top of the second tracker in the same relative position like when I started the recording. So this macro will repeat the same steps relative to the starting position. Now I can stop the recording by going to the Developer tab and click on Stop Recording. And because I assigned a shortcut to this macro, Control shift p then I'll be testing it, and when I hit Control shift p I would have fixed the next record. Every time I hit Control shift p I'm fixing another record, and so on, and so on. Now that I finished recording and testing my macro, I'm going to close this file and reopen it and start over again doing the same exact thing, but I'll be using only shortcuts. I reopened the Excel file, and I want to recreate the same exact project by using shortcuts. I start by bringing the Developer tab to the ribbon, and I do that by using the shortcut Alt-FTC. The Excel option dialog box opens, I check Developer, and then hit OK. Now I want to tell Excel that I'll be recording a relative macro, and I do that by using the shortcut Alt-LU. Use relative references highlighted, I want to start my recording by using the shortcut Alt-LR. In the Record Macro dialog box, I'll be assigning a name, fix my records, and then I hit Tab to assign a shortcut, and the shortcut will be Shift-P, so when I run the macro, I'll be using the shortcut Control-Shift-P, because the control was already there. I'll accept the default, and then I hit OK, and I'm in the process of recording. The first thing, I want to select the first name of the first record, so I hit the down arrow on my keyboard, and to extend my selection to the entire first tracker, I hit the shortcut shift Control down arrow. Now I want to copy this record, so I hit Control c to copy. And because I want to select cell A2, and because my selection right now shows the first name at the active cell, so I want to shrink my selection to the active cell, cell A3, by hitting the shortcut shift backspace. With this cell selected, I can move up by hitting the up arrow on my keyboard, and then I want to transpose my record, the first one that I'll be fixing, by using the shortcut Alt-ESE. -E. And then I hit Enter. I fixed the first record. Now I want to prepare for deleting the original record. So I hit Shift Backspace to shrink my selection to cell A2. I move down one row by hitting the down arrow. Extend my selection by hitting Shift Control down arrow. Now I'm selecting the first record. I want to select the entire row, so I hit the shortcut Shift Space Bar, and now I want to delete all these rows. I use the shortcut Control Minus on the numeric keypad. To prepare for stopping the recording, I want to shrink my selection to the active cell, so I hit Shift Backspace, and now I'm in the proper position for rerunning this macro. I want to stop the recording, so I hit the shortcut Alt L R. I stop the recording, and now I want to test my macro, so I use the shortcut that I assigned to this macro, Control shift p Every time I hit the shortcut, I'll be fixing another record, and so on. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to my channel, and ring the bell to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching.
and see you next time.